Wow, it's rare, man. It's rare we have royalty in this studio, huh? I can only think of one other king that we've had in this studio, King Princess, and they are definitely royalty, but so are you, bro, the king of Wachata. What is up, my man? How What's you going doing? On, my brother? Pleasure being here. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. Man, you really laid it out for your fans. Everyone's pretty excited, huh? Keeping the formula moving. Yeah, yeah, man. This has been a long time history in the making, but uh, I'm excited, man. I feel like you've been making history now for a very long time. For someone who's still young and in this game has a long way to go. You started young, but you made the most of your time. Feel like a life lived already? I feel like, you know, there's a lot more to be done. You know, I'm, I'm as hungry as I was the first project mm. I worked on. Sincerely, you know, I, I feel like this is just the beginning. Why so insatiable? Where do you think that comes from? You know, some people plateau. Some people who achieve certain things they've always wanted to achieve. They want to remain creative, but the hunger isn't there. What drives your hunger? I mean, I think the, the youth, you know, like there's always uh, someone killing it in the game, you know, whether it's urban um, different genres and you know I'm, I'm so competitive in a, in a positive note you know that it just motivates me to to stay in tune with what's happening pushing yourself and therefore pushing others further down the road that's why you've done so many firsts and broken through into other genres broken through boundaries geographic musical artistic in order to and never forsaken who you are that's the thing I really love about your journey you make people come to your house that's that's always the objective. But what do you play in your house? How deep does your taste go in terms of cross genre? Like, what's your playlist saying? How 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 left and right does it go? You know what? It's so diverse, mm. man. Like every month, I'm listening to someone new, or like sometimes I don't even know the names of artists. Mm -hmm. I'm just like playing whatever someone puts me on. Yeah, yeah, it's for interesting. sure. Interesting. I'm like I'm down to just continue to, um, I guess, uh, feed myself with new material new sounds i love the little details that you put into your albums you always have an intro i love i love intros i love i love artists that set the tone for a body of work and not just song one right some intros are funnier than others and i feel like the formula has you've set aside your intros to be humorous and with like Golden Utopia, you were like, ah, I'm going to be more artistic in, right. that, in, that, in that respect. Right. Um, very conscious. Are, are we going to do that again on, on volume three? Oh, totally. We got to keep the tradition. I can't wait to who you, I mean, if you got, like, who'd you get? George Lopez and was it Kevin Hart amongst them? Yeah, yeah. George Lopez was volume one. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Hart was volume two. Um, I could, I could, I could, I could review. Yeah, right? you, dude, you can reveal whatever you want. It's only going to be your label and your management that come up after us and tell us to cut, 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 <laughs> cut. But right now you're in a cone of silence, my G. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So in uh, volume three, I have Cat Williams. Um, huge fan, <laughs> yeah. huge fan. And I wanted to make this intro very personal. Mm. So my kids participate. That's cool. Yeah. How old are your kids? My oldest is 22. Wow. Well, he's going to be 22 September 1st. Bro, you look 25. What are you talking about? <laughs> what Thank you, you. I try, I try, man. That's makeup and production. Now, nah, that's knowing where the elixir is. You should tell You should tell us, man. You can't hold on to that well forever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, a lot of water, a gallon a day. I love that. Um, but I was saying, uh, um, I got my 22-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be 22 September 1st, uh, the day my album releases. Uh, Beautiful. I have my three-year-old yeah. participating yeah. as well, and my youngest, he's 16 months. Wow, congratulations. What a beautiful sounding family, man. Thank you, my brother. Incredible. Appreciate you know, your fans get so excited when you're back with a with a, with another volume. Um, what is it do you think that they recognize that's the difference? Why, why does it matter so much that you come back and officially confirm that you're now gonna do another formula and this time it's volume three? Because people just went crazy. I think they expect I'm gonna push the envelope. That's a great answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to, do not one not two but a couple of moves musically speaking that they weren't even expecting you know i i have this uh it could sound cliche but you know i i always say give the fans what they need not what they want yeah. <laughs> and that's not how, how do you make this? that up by the way no, how, do you no, make that how about we amend it right how about we say do what you want and give them what they need yeah yeah that works too that sounds <laughs> More, more appropriate. Well, at least you're in the equation, which is the most important thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Someone who ain't hungry ain't reaching out to uh, Justin Timberlake in a hurry. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there is some parallels here. You know, Justin coming from a band of four people, you know, of, of people as well, uh, sync, deciding to go out there, do his own thing. Um, did you sort of ever consider yourself to be on somewhat of a, even somewhat of a parallel journey to him, but in your own world? It's crazy, you know, how we share so many similarities. And before I even... Uh, Created anything musically speaking, 
uh, I had a conversation with JT, mm. and I wanted him to understand um, how important this was for me, for my culture, for my genre. Mm. And I explained the whole entire legacy of our of formula, volume one and two. And he understood that. And I remember him telling me, listen, it's about the music. You present to me something that I'm, that moves me, and we're going to do it, you know? So I shared something I want to I want to I want to tell you um, how I how crazy ironic this is. Let's go. Collaborating with JT was a, something so important and personal for me. Um, it was in my bucket list. In 2001, if I'm not mistaken, I'm bad with the, the years. My second album with Aventura, my first cover, possibly my only cover, or my second cover, because I've only done two or three mm-hmm. I did Gone I recorded Gone I Crazy. rewrote it in Spanish Crazy. which in sync by the way also had yeah. a, a, a Spanish version but I rewrote it I didn't realize that that's a hit tailored of the curve, it to, huh? yeah and it's crazy because I remember I did this and it just felt so honest to us I tell Lenny Mike and Henry like yo one day we're gonna collaborate with JT and I said we because I never again envision being a solo artist yeah and I share that story, as anecdota, with JT, and, and you know, it's, it's it was like a, a surreal moment. How can you not believe in magic when you find yourself in a situation where the two of you are connected? Granted, twenty twenty one years later, it doesn't. I, I I always think the timeline is so irrelevant when when you're connecting the dots in real time, because mm-hmm. twenty one years to you probably felt like yesterday mm-hmm. when you when you finally connected with him. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Because you're still was... that fan, right? You're still that fan. Listen, I am. I, I, I'm. I, listen, I've been in the studio. I've been. It's an honor to say that I've. I was part of just seeing Hove create four 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 and seeing this man in action. And I'm just like, I'm gonna tell my grandkids about this. Now nah, you're gonna tell us right now about that moment. Oh That's, yeah, that to me is one of my favorite Jay Z albums ever. And I'll tell you what my theory is, bro. You know, up until 444, rap music for the most part as a genre had been pretty obsessed with bangers, right? Every album's got to have some hits. Every album's got to reach for something and then you can do what you want with the overall. Right. Jay-Z 444, because it was attached to a, a body of work that his wife had made so beautifully and amazingly, laid it out and drawn the narrative back and said, you don't get to own us. Right. He took rap music into that place where it wasn't about the radio hits. It was like Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Nina Simone, Bob Dylan. Mm. He gave rap music, rap fans, I reckon, one of, if not the first album of that kind of space. Say, don't get me open talking about hip-hop because we'll be here like two hours. Let's clear the diary and have this conversation right now. Let's go. I, I could tell you, um, to me, Hove is the greatest MC alive. I Without agree. a doubt, you I know. Um, I have an interesting list. You know, I have Biggie in there. Yeah. Um, Careful Eminem. now. We're in list territory. Now it's going to get the internet on fire. Yeah. Let's go. Who else is on there? I Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I got to put three stacks in my 10. No question about it. Andre 3000 to oh, me is just like. But he's in there for sure. You know, it's just that I always like. He talks about real life, man. And he just does it no, such a No, Andre 3000 is amazing. You know, I think uh, Big L. Ah, oh, thank you, my Big gosh. L. Yeah. Um, Cut way too short, man. Cut down way too short. You know, you know, you know, I really feel like uh, Nicki Minaj. Hands down, record breaker. Like, Undeniable. I think she's she the queen. Apart a king, lot of, she's your queen. Yeah, it shouldn't be about male, female. Like, she's just one of the greatest. Nah, it's long gone there. You know? Old school, I'd put Rakim on my list because he's the god MC. And I just don't think yeah. at the time in the late 80s, anybody was putting it together like he was. There's definitely a lot of legends, you know, living legends that paved the way. But, you know, to me, Hove is just like number one. Well, also the way he carries himself now. It's not just about the bars, right? With what I think what's really interesting, and this was almost further to the 444 point of maturing the art form yeah. is he's matured the conversation and he said look I'll show up on your record I won't even charge you if rumors, yeah. are, uh, rumors are to be believed but I'm also going to show up in lots of other conversations yeah. I'm going to build business phil- philanthropy social justice and equality he's building a full life well let me say this something that amazes me about Hove is that you know I've made an observation with a lot of different artists different genres Hove is probably one of the few artists that can 
collaborate with someone and it could be like new blood. We call new blood like a new artist yeah. with a new flow. Yeah. You would not outshine Jay-Z mm. in any record. He would never be outdated. I think this guy is yeah. just the definition of flow, um, perfect theme, swag, you know, lyricist. He, the guy is, to me, just the greatest. Let me, let's talk quickly about your 444 experience for the people because I, I would love to hear, hear a little bit about that. So I was, out, I was actually out here in L.A. Um, and uh, Jay was working at, on that album and I just... I was just like fortunate to just be part of that experience. I wasn't working on anything musically speaking with Jay. It was just me there, you know, like, and, you know, he was in such a uh, important personal moment of his life because he was expressing, without a doubt, this is Jay's most personal, personal album. For sure. And to, to, to witness that prior to the world, the world, um, yeah. Presenciar ese disco to me was like a surreal moment. Like I knew what this about to create for hip hop culture. Yeah. And anyone that felt like, oh, I can't say that, you know, because I'm gonna look soft for this. Like when when Jay, you know, expresses something some so personal that he's experiencing in his life is almost like the stamp of approval. He was writing a scripture yeah. for everyone else to read from and to it grow was from. Education. Yeah, it, fue catedra. Mm -hmm. You know, that album to me is, is very powerful. You know, you've collaborated beautifully and done wonderful things with Bachata and, you know, for, for your peers and for young artists who don't want to ultimately have to, like I said before, transform into something that's even slightly compromised, right? You could do it on your own terms and you've proven that and people have come to you. What are some of the collaborations that you've had um, throughout your solo career that, you know, you have the fondest memories of or you feel like really ultimately put a proper paving stone on the path to the evolution of the music you love. To Julio Iglesias. I, mm. When I recorded with Julio Iglesias, like, I remember telling my, my parents about it. And, you know, I've recorded with some iconic artists and not, nothing really moves them. When I mentioned Julio Iglesias, my mother looked at me like, you fucking made it. You know, like that that feeling. Like, I grew up listening to Julio Iglesias. We all did. There was always one album in every collection. It's like you had to have at least one where yeah. you truly understood the power of that man's voice and what he yeah. was doing. To, to, to demand attention without demanding attention. Like, just his presence. Just, you know, before he even sings, before he even speaks. True charisma. Like, you know, women wanted him, men wanted to be like him. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, he's like the true definition of swag you well, know because he was so accessible to everyone and he was completely inaccessible to everyone yes yes he was amazing he was amazing he is amazing it's a magic gag you know mark anthony when i was able to you know produce and and, and write a song for one of my uh mis idolos that to me was like wow i, I was in the studio we were there for like seven eight hours just amazing. like vibing talking shit, you know, recording and you know, th those are like really special moments that I would um, siempre valorar. Before we say goodbye, man, I'd love a few words about the song that we're obviously focused on right now from the record, um, which represents the album as the cover of New Music Daily, which loosely translated as eternal or a thought that never ends. Um, ultimately, where did this idea for the song come from before you even went out to JT with it? Well, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I wanted to truly uh, present something to the man that moved him. So I, I I couldn't miss. I couldn't present something to him that was lame or... Well, he set the bar, bro. He was like, send me something that gets me. Yeah, otherwise, don't at said, me. Yeah, yeah. He said, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? I don't like it. Yeah. And, and you're like, like, yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I, I linked up with uh, uh, Danger, producer Danger. Yeah. Um, he worked on a lot of, like... Uh, JT's huge hits with uh, Timbaland. You that know, like is sexy smart. Back. And you made that call, not him. You made that call. It, man, you are I, so listen, smart, bro. I, re I recruited <laughs> the best team I could think of to really present something major to this man. That's amazing. Um, I also got my brother Rico Love um, that co-wrote in this record, produced. And, you know, 
let me say this. When I presented the song to JT, I thought I was laying down like something that was pretty developed. When I seen JT in action in the studio, adding his spice, you know, he's another artist that, you know, is the true definition of producer. Yeah, he does. He like, does he, he, does he does threw his shit. spice, like, you know, no, he, he rearranged some melodies, some lyrics, and he just made it into a true collaboration. It wasn't no longer a Romeo Santos featuring Justin Timberlake. It was a Romeo Santos JT and, song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this could, this could open doors and markets that Bachata has never really... Um, gone through like I'm talking about like this is like a pop bachata. This is this one's special. Which is part of the point. And I and I and I love that you've always been open about that. You know, it's great to make great music. It's it's even better to make great you know, forward steps, great moves in pushing things forward. Um Dude, I've, it, it's crazy that we've only met at this point. Look at what you've achieved already in your life. But hopefully this is the first of many conversations and uh, enjoy that free time, bro. You ain't gonna get Thank much you, brother. Hands. Appreciate it. Appreciate you.